I start with the usual apology, but this time I mean it. Uh, <laughs> this is a very incomplete report for many, many reasons. Uh, the Beethoven Symposium, or as it was called in Greek, in Platonic, correct fashion, the Symposium, was a very extensive and intensive affair. The lectures will be published, I understand, in book form in about a year's time. And what I can give you today is not even a summing up of all the interesting lectures that were held during the symposium. I had to miss two or three because of other more important uh, commitments, second breakfasts, uh, lunches, <laughs> coffees in the afternoon and the like. Uh, furthermore, I am not knowledgeable enough to have understood correctly all the Johann Gottlob, Traugott, Fürchtegotts, etc. And I'm sure I misunderstood some of the statements. And also, I find now, as I try to check up on what I have heard, that many of the things that seem to be brand new and novel and interesting and the results of most recent deep research are already in books, so not much of it of what I will tell you, you may be very familiar with, and I apologize for all these things. As I say, the printed report will come out, and budget permitting and cataloging being expedited, I'm sure you will get it within the next five, six, or seven <laughs> years, before my next sabbatical. <laughs> The opening addresses were given by Dr. Albin Lesky, L-E-S-K-Y, a prominent Greek scholar, formerly rector of the University of Vienna, past president of the Academy of Sciences, and a member of many scientific academies, a very impressive gentleman of about 73. The next speaker was Professor Dr. D. Dr. Uh, H. C. Uh, Erich Schenk. That means that he was professor and earned a doctorate and that he had several honorary doctorates on top of it. Uh, honorary, not honoraris causa, but honoris causa. So the former head of the Institute of Musicology of the University of Vienna and one of the editors of the Denkmäler der Tonkunst in Österreich. Now also retired, a great scholar who has gone through a very grave illness in the past few years and is only a shadow of his former self, I am told, but a very impressive person. The other addresses were, of course, by representatives of governmental bodies, among them the mayor of Vienna, Bruno Marek, uh, who is married to an amateur musician, a society lady, and therefore is one of the chief supporters and promoters of Yeni's uh, concert life. I understand he pays for the... Wiener Symphonica uh, Orchestra out of his own pocket. Uh, a list of participants and um, all the official personalities um, are at your disposal in these uh, booklets here. Among the participants was our former graduate in musicology, Dr. Mildred Johnson, who had been in Vienna before and came again for this occasion. Uh, after that, uh, she went back to the States with us for just for five days. Then she was sent on a study tour of East India, and her junior college paid for both trips, 100%. <laughs> no, <laughs> no implications. <laughs> the organization of the Congress was under the, uh, in the hands of a professor, Teofil Antonovich. Uh, and it was generally excellent. My only slight objections were to the, or are to the type of publicity that was sent out. It emphasized Johann Strauss much more than Beethoven, as you may remember, if you have seen the advertisements that were on our library bulletin board. It is also regrettable that no Fidelio tickets were available for the participants. There were also no tickets uh, for any of the concerts uh, of the Berlin Philharmonic under Karajan or uh, for the uh, uh, Vienna Philharmonic under um, Bernstein. There were two opera uh, performances available 
uh, tickets for two opera performances, but uh, they turned out, that we weren't told ahead of time what it was, and they turned out to be Tannhäuser and Tosca. <laughs> so I didn't take up my option. And <laughs> neither for Tannhäuser nor for Tosca, and uh, canceled and got my money back. Um, <laughs> It was a very wise idea, on the other hand, by, of the initiators and guiding spirits of the Congress to stress the scientific aspect of the session, uh, rather than surfeit us with more performances of Beethoven's music. The musical fare of the Congress itself was therefore cut to a minimum. Uh, the June festival weeks in Vienna offered an overabundance of performances anyway. Uh, if you want to look at the program of these June festival uh, weeks in Vienna, I have one here, and you see that in all the suburbs of Vienna, there were practically Beethoven performances every day. Not all of them good, I understand, but uh, rather plentiful. Um, what we heard was more music by the minor masters, by contemporaries of Beethoven. So, for instance, um, uh, and little, comparatively little, by Beethoven himself. We heard uh, Beethoven's forehand music played. Uh, on a Beethoven piano by a Professor Hans Kahn, a Viennese pianist, and his Spanish-born wife, Rosario Marciano, very beautifully played. Then we heard music by contemporaries, among others, a very interesting piece by Archduke Rudolf. Uh, I understand that nothing has been written about Archduke Rudolf, and that there are stacks of, co uh, of compositions by him, and it would be very worthwhile uh, for somebody to make a dissertation on him and uh, many minor masters of, uh, of the circle around Beethoven played by the Consentus Musicus of Vienna on ancient instruments. Uh, the conclusion was a symphonic concert by what is rated in Vienna as a third rank orchestra, the Philharmonic, then the Symphonica, and then uh, this one, but an excellent instrumental body, very ably conducted by a former member of the Philharmonic Orchestra, who has just recently begun a conducting career a uh, man with a future, I believe you will hear of him, Walter Weller, W-E-L-L-E-R. This uh, is the Niederösterreichische, Land uh, Niederösterreichische Tonkünstler Orchestra, the orchestra of Lower Austria. Uh, even this concert uh, did not stress Beethoven. There was only the romance of a violin, an orchestra in F, very beautifully played by a young violinist, Ernst Kovacic, and otherwise we heard the Haydn Symphony Number no. 101 and the Schubert in B-flat. And the physical and technical arrangements for the lectures and the simultaneous translations into English and French uh, were perhaps less uh, satisfactory. Uh, this was not due to lack of ability on the part of the translators. They were excellent. But the whole of the Academy of Sciences, it, which is basically a very acoustic uh, place, uh, when the creation was performed there, the orchestra was arranged, as Professor Schenk explained, along the long side of the hall. Uh, the window side, and from there the acoustics work out very beautifully. However, the speaker's uh, podium, it's a very uh, highly raised podium, has been for the last hundred years on the small side of the hall, and from there the voices simply don't carry. Uh, it's about as bad as our alumni hall. Uh, one didn't understand a word unless one put earphones on, even for lectures in one's own mother tongue. So I had listened to the German lectures with earphones. On top of that, one heard the translators' voices coming out of the booths, uh, uh, arranged along the wall. And they were arranged along wall, so you heard them very well. <laughs> um, at one point, the system of simultaneous translation broke down completely. And of course, this made for a great deal of confusion and held up the proceedings for over an hour one morning. So I, I missed out on Professor Sophia Lissas. Uh, lecture on Beethoven's influence on uh, Polish music and on Chopin, which would have interested me very much. Uh, there were two guided tours, one to the Beethoven houses in Vienna and one to the Beethoven houses in Bonn. I did not uh, attend. Other uh, than what I mentioned before, the arrangements were most satisfactory. Everybody was cooperative and polite, and miracle of miracles, the lectures were timed most carefully and did not run over as is usually the case I have experienced. <laughs>